Hey everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with here today with an article from the Daily Signal dated October 16th. And it says, the Washington Post claims Republicans wage war on fact checkers. Well, maybe because you guys don't actually have fact checkers. You have regime propagandists. And no matter what a Republican says, you guys try to say, no, 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 that's wrong. When I think we found out more than a few times in the last few years that you guys uh, are almost always wrong about this sort of stuff. I should say almost always, but a lot of the times are wrong. And plus, it's coming from the Washington Post. So it's basically like Satan trying to say this. You might as well just say, Satan claims Republicans wage war on fact checkers, but let's just get into it. <clears throat> it's from Tim Graham, who does work for the Media Research Center, as it says here, and Newsbusters, which I do videos from uh, when they have something I want to talk about. So this is probably on their site too, but let's just go into it on here. It says, liberal journalists love to paint the Republicans as opposed to facts, which implies that liberal journalists own the facts and determine who is using them properly. The Washington Post put this aggressive headline on the front of its October 15th edition. It says, Campaign takes stand against fact checks. In live settings, Trump aims to let his falsehoods go unchallenged. What falsehoods, you ask? Well, they're probably not really going to say much of anything, or they're going to do their usual, like, Trump said the sky is blue. This is false. Sometimes the sky can be shades of red, purple, orange, and of course, blue. But that's the kind of thing that they do. So it says, reporters Ashley Parker and Josh Dawsey begin by noting the Trump campaign has waged an aggressive campaign against fact-checking in recent months, pushing the media to abandon the practice if they hope to interact with Trump. So they describe former President Donald Trump's resentment over PolitiFact's joining the anti-Trump brigade at the National Association of Black Journalists beatdown and the fact-checking that occurred during Trump's ABC News debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, as well as Trump skipping 60 minutes over CBS's news fact-checking. The one crucial fact emerged very late out of this Republicans hate facts story. The dramatic imbalance of who tagged is false. <clears throat> As ABC's debate moderator singled out Trump for five combative fact checks. CBS debate moderator said they wouldn't fact check the candidates then pushed around J.D. Vance, Trump's running mate, on Haitian migrants in Ohio. The word moderator is a bad joke. So as Parker and Dossie returned to an old saw. The Washington Post fact-checker team tallied that by the end of Trump's presidency, he had made 30,573 false or misleading claims and averaged about 21 false, erroneous, or misleading claims a day. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's BS right off the bat. That's, that's impossible, almost. <laughs> okay. So it says they don't mention that Glenn Kessler, the Post's so-called fact-checker, proclaimed in 2021 that there would be no systematic counting of President Joe Biden's false or misleading statements. Yep, so this is how you know they're completely partisan, is I'm only going to count it when the other guy does it, not when our own guy does it. And coming back up here, let me scroll back up a little bit. The ABC debate moderators, when they were going after Trump, they happened to be wrong. And the one that is most prominent there is when David Moyer uh, fact-checked Trump about the crime rates, and he said the, and David Moyer said the crime rates were were down and Trump was like, yeah, that's BS basically. Well, it turns out that was completely wrong. And I did a video about that, that at the point you're listening to this was up, I'd say a few days ago that the FBI did revise uh, their crime statistics to say it was four and a half percent. There was a four and a half percent increase as opposed to a decrease as has been the word going around. And then the CBS thing, when they're talking about the Haitians, yeah, they also were wrong about that too. <clears throat> so I wonder why Republicans have problems with fact checkers. So where was I here? So it says, so going back up to here, so we finished on saying um, that there'd be no uh, fact checking of Joe Biden's misleading statements. And I think we can all say pretty safely that Joe Biden has lied about a lot, but not 30,000 times because that's ridiculous. This, doesn't that suggest that fact checking is a weapon used against Republicans? It sure does. And doesn't it betray a partisan tilt? Yes, that Democrats are remarkably more honest politicians. And that's trying. that's the way that they're trying to frame it. So as a look at the Post's fact checker homepage on October 15th demonstrates that this dramatic imbalance is still in effect. Just counting the cartoon Pinocchios on the first page shows Trump and his team have drawn 39 Pinocchios. Team Harris has zero, which, again, cannot possibly be true. Just go to the Kamala HQ Twitter account. I'm not sure they've ever posted anything factually correct. So there's no way that can be zero unless you're not checking it or you're just lying. That's it. <clears throat> says, for one article, the fact checker daintly notes, Harris flubs manufacturing jobs claim in MSNBC interview. Seven articles on the Trump side get the maximum four Pinocchios, which means pants on fire, judgment. A new media research center count of fact checks at PolitiFact shows a similar aggression. 
There are 24 pants on fire rulings for Republicans from January through September, 20 of them Trump, to just one for Democrats, linked by my governor, J.B. Pritzker, here in Illinois. It says, overall, Republican politicians were judges mostly false or worse 79% of the time, while Democrats were in that penalty box only 36% of the time. If that was reversed, I'd say it's probably closer to equal, but it, there still needs to be the Democrats 36% of the time. That is. That is way too low. I'm like, like way. That should be at, probably at least 79 percent, if not higher. Um, and now I'm starting to wonder, seeing J.B. Prisker's name again. Like, what did he do? I'd have to. I don't want to go to the Post website, but I don't know what he said. But I'm kind of curious. Anywho, says the Post reporters found a liberal expert to back up their theme, because of course, it says University of Wisconsin professor Lucas Graves gains the big, bold, and italic pull quote inside the paper. Within the political establishment on the right, it is now considered quite legitimate, and quite legitimate to say publicly and openly, that you disapprove of fact-checking. No, we disapprove of you guys doing fact-checking when it's so obviously partisan. That's the problem. If it was legit fact-checking and you were hitting both people, at least not necessarily 50-50, but something resembling that, and things were equal, then I don't think anybody would have a problem with it. But it's just, all these fact-checkers are just Democrats, good, Republicans, bad. That's it. It says, it's tribalism to oppose liberal fact-checking, but you can't say it's tribalism for the liberal fact-checkers to trash the Republicans much more often and much more harshly. They should be charged with ad police brutality. Naturally, the Post concludes this partisan piece by citing how the liberal bias was followed by liberal mockery on NBC Saturday Night Live, where Bowen Yang, the Asian comedian playing Vance at the CBS debate, said, don't fact-check that multiple times in one sentence. It says, this is the Post liberal journalists love to strike. We cannot be criticized. Object to us and you hate facts, journalism, safety, sanity, and democracy. They have a monopoly on the truth, whatever they decide it is. And that's what they want. They're trying to propagandize you. They're trying to say they're trying to say that we know the truth and the other people don't. Okay? And I mean the only the, the only thing you need to do to realize who knows the truth or not is just listen to anyone on like CNN or MSNBC speak to like Republicans. And the Republicans always have the details straight. I'm not saying like, I'm talking about like regular people, not anybody in government. Okay, the Republicans always have things straight. I mean, they just, they had like within the last year, I think it was an MSNBC, I want to say it was Dasha Burns, went to Pittsburgh and asked like Trump uh, voters or prospective Trump voters about January 6th. And hello to the community note that'll pop up on here because I said the magic words. And about how many people died and everything. And these people schooled her ass on it. Like, everything they said was correct, and she was the one that was wrong, but she's the reporter. And, I mean, that's not the only time something like this has happened. Even just go out and look at, like, man-on-the-street type videos, talking to Kamala supporters. They don't know the truth about anything because uh, they've been lied to, okay? So that's, you know, the, these fact-checking people, like, especially from, like, the Washington Post, who should not be trusted at all, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So anyway, I'm rambling. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.